Good morning. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I've got a keto grocery haul for you and I'm going to be making a couple dishes to show you. I didn't need a lot of food this week. It's a short week for me. Um, but I did need some eggs for breakfast. I got some cream cheese, some coffee creamer. Um, I was out of olive oil. Vinegar, I used this white vinegar to clean my tea kettle. Some mushrooms, I'm going to make an egg casserole for breakfast. Some sausage to go with that. I'm going to make coleslaw. I have um, in my freezer some pulled pork and roast chicken pulled chicken I think or is it beef I'm not sure but I have beef and pork I think in the freezer so that'll be lunch I'm gonna make some coleslaw with the cabbage some cheese for my egg casserole pork rinds as usual I also have some sausages in the frizz freezer I'll cut up and some cheese and then I picked up these pans and they are metal and they're pizza pans I got them at Aldi they were $2.99 and I'm going to make two pizza crusts for dinner this week. Um, or breakfast, lunch, it just depends. Um, so yeah, I will bring you along. My total was $28.57. Alright, let's make some pizza crust. Alrighty, the first thing we're going to make is coleslaw. So I chopped up a head of cabbage. And that's a lot of coleslaw, but I'll eat it all week. And hi, baby. I have some mayonnaise in here. I just use Dukes. Um, that's what I like. Normally, I would use um, Dijon mustard, but I don't have any, so I'm going to use some of this. If I can get the lid off. It's my hands are wet from cooking and doing dishes. There we go. So I'm just going to use some of this horseradish mustard. It's a little spicier, but that's okay. I just like the mustard kick. Dijon definitely is a creamier, smoother, more mild flavor than that's going to be. Um, I also add apple cider vinegar because I like a little sweetness to mine. And it loosens up the um, mayonnaise. And then again, I do like some sweetness. So I'm going to put two packets of my coffee sweetener. And this is Sweet Additions from Aldi. And it is just stevia and erythritol. So it's pretty clean. And my Dollar Tree Woodger thingy, just to get it going. Um, I may have to add a little more vinegar to this. I like mine a little smoother and then I'm going to add some coriander I don't measure when I make dressing I just kind of go by the thickness that I like I love this dinner look at how quickly that brings it together and the mustard also kind of helps emulsify it now I'm going to add a little bit of coriander seed it's got like a vibrant almost a citrusy note to it and I would like some pepper I'm not gonna salt it right away I want to taste it first but I know I like a lot of pepper and if you don't have pepper grinder just use some cracked pepper doesn't matter back here I do have the sausages going no this thing is great if you see them at the Dollar Tree um, part of what will happen when you set your your coleslaw, it will draw out some liquid. So I'm not too worried about that. Yum. Mmm. That's delicious. It just needs a little more vinegar. Because that's my preference. You do you. Whatever you like in yours. And it does need some salt. So I'll go ahead and I put a fair amount of salt in because this is a lot of cabbage. Oops. And I'll splash myself. And that is it. Let's taste it again. 
Yeah. That is perfect. Because with that sweet, you really want, sorry, that's my arm. I need my tongs. You cut, I really like that vinegary bite. Now, all I'm gonna do is pour this over and tong it together and then put it in the refrigerator. It just needs to sit, you know, for several hours for the flavors to blend and make it coleslaw. Tomorrow it'll be even better. But what I will do is stick it in my refrigerator. Now, I don't add carrots and all of that only because it just adds carbohydrates and I don't feel like it adds much to the flavor. But feel free, to, and I just threw cabbage on my floor, feel free to get a col coleslaw mix if that's what you so choose. Um, it's relatively inexpensive and it comes already with the carrots grated into it. And then back here, which you can't see, but I'm just cooking the sausage for the egg casserole and for pizza topping. So I'm going to make mushroom pizza, mushroom and sausage pizzas for later in the week. All right. I'm going to get this covered and in the refrigerator and cook the sausage. Now what we're going to make is what I'm calling puffy pizza, or what Christy, Dr. Christy Sullivan calls puffy pizza. I got it off her YouTube channel, Cooking Keto with Christy. And I just wrote down the, it here if you want to do a screenshot. It is eight ounces of cream cheese, which I have blended, four eggs. And this recipe is on the internet, so I think it's okay for me to share. Give me one second. Okay. So that's four eggs. I don't have any onion powder, but I do have zesty Italian that I made that has a lot of onion powder in it. So I'm not worried about that. But it wants two and a half teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So I've got that right here. And this is stuff that I made. And I do have a video on it. So there's one two and a half teaspoons of Italian seasoning there. Um, it wants two teaspoons of fresh garlic. Um, the freshest that I have right now on hand is some chopped garlic. It's fresh enough. Although fresh, you know, is always going to be better, but this is something I try to keep on hand because and then a teaspoon and a half of baking powder since I have the teaspoon all garlicky I'll just do three half teaspoons and that makes a teaspoon and a half look at us doing math one half Two half. This is what's going to help make it puffy. Do you remember back in the day, if you were anywhere near my age bracket, um, Bisquick had this puffy pizza. This is very, very similar to that. Um, la 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 la, garlic, Parmesan cheese. So a cup. I had a blend of shredded and powdered. So we're just going to call it. Do a quick blend of that. And now it wants two cups of mozzarella. Now, like a lot of keto recipes, your base is really cheese and eggs. I mean, that's gonna be what's the structure behind this. And then this is the filling. This is the base. You can add any fillings that you want. I'm gonna add some pepper or some sausage and some chopped mushroom to mine. And then you put it in a pan. I'm going to use those pizza pans I bought. So there's one. You really should measure mozzarella. And I guess we should talk about making our own mozzarella instead of me buying it in the bag. Ugh, it's just so much work. But this does, and I'm going to just use a little extra. Um, mostly because I don't know that that was an accurate measure. Okay. So that right here is the basis of this recipe. One more switch. 
Just want to give it a good mix. There we go. Now, I'm going to pause you for a second. I got to chop up the mushrooms. I think they're warm now. I mean, cool. So give me one second. Already, I chopped up some mushrooms that I already cooked. I'm going to put the rest in my egg bake. And this is how I kind of save some money too. Like my ingredients this week, um, sausage and mushrooms are going to go in several recipes. And then I put some sausage in here. And that way I'm not buying and not eating stuff. You know, when you're cooking for one, that's kind of the hard part. Now, I'm putting in, like, seriously very little sauce in here. But I do want a little bit of a tomatoey flavor. So we're going to put two tablespoons in here. And then I'm going to drizzle. Oops, sorry. I'm going to drizzle... A little on top just for us to have that tomatoey flavor without all the carbohydrates that come with tomato sauce okay I'm bringing you over here's my pans my little pizza pans I got I did spray them with a little bit of coconut oil and then what I'm gonna do is get a measuring cup out let me tell you, I go through a lot of dishes when I cook, but I want these to be even, and I'm not sure if this is going to be too much for these two pans. And if that's the case, I'll just put the rest in another pan. Not a problem. But I want to use my new pan, so, and I'm also getting it apparently everywhere. This is going to be one cup so far of the batter and I think no I definitely can handle a little more in here um, it see how runny it is it's just like that Bisquick pizzas oh it's such childhood memories for me yeah I think I'll get it all in here and this probably will be more than one serving for me um, of these pizzas just because this is a lot of a lot of pizza here we'll do a little bit in here and a little bit in here and that is it so it was about a cup and a half per pizza pan now obviously you can do this all in a sheet pan you could do it all in any type of a pan that you want um, I'm going to just let that cook. I'll wash it after. So this is what mine looks like. Now, as I said, I want to drizzle just a little bit of sauce on top. And if I had pepperoni, I could. But this was the fillings that I chose for this go around of this pizza. You can have any fillings you want. But like I said, I like to use the same ingredients in multiple dishes. And that way I just don't feel like I'm wasting food. Now, just a couple tablespoons on each, and then I'll take a butter knife and just kind of smear it in a little bit. Just a little bit to get it down in there so it kind of bakes in. And I'm putting it in a 375 degree oven. This is dinner tonight and then dinner, you know, or lunch for the next couple days. But I will show you when I pull it out of the oven what it's gonna look like. But it's going in a 375 degree oven. I have no idea how long it's gonna bake because I don't know how long um, it'll take in this size of a pan. But we will know when it comes out of the oven. Now we're gonna work on the egg casserole while I have the puffy pizzas in the oven puffing up. Um, in here I have 10 eggs, some heavy cream, some Cholula hot sauce, salt and pepper. I'm just going to whip it up real quick. Nothing too dramatic here. You just want it nice and blended together. 
you don't need a whole lot of salt because of the sausage is pretty uh pretty spicy all by itself so what we'll do is take this which is the mushrooms left over and the sausage just kind of blend it out here you just want a little bit of everything everywhere because when it comes out I'm going to cut it into squares and that will be my breakfast for this week to take to work I don't like to eat when I first get up so we have that and then a little bit of sharp cheddar and you can put again any ingredients in here that you like um, you just want enough egg to cover and I like to put the cheese in here and this kind of holds it together and then I just pour on top the egg mixture super easy and then what I do is I take a spoon fork knife and I let it get the egg you know down in between all of the meat cheese and then this goes in the oven um, this takes about 45 minutes if you do eat carbohydrates you could put hash brown potatoes in here you could put shredded zucchini you could put biscuits my boss puts biscuits in the bottom of hers I obviously don't eat the carbs, so I don't. And then I just sprinkle maybe a couple little more pieces of cheese on top. And I'll top it with some pepper. Because that's what I like. Ooh, as I'm throwing stuff. And that's it. That'll go in the oven when the puffy pizza comes out. And I have my pork. My pulled pork thawing that I had in my freezer, that'll get served into a container that I can put in the microwave. The coleslaw will go into a container that doesn't get microwaved. Uh, but I'll bring you back when everything is completely finished and show you what my prepared meals for the week look like. I took my pizza out of the oven and I think and I let it cool. Now, as I had said before, oh, that I did let it, um, I sprayed it a little bit, but I wasn't sure if this pan was non-stick or not. But we're gonna find out. So I'm just kind of getting it away from the side. I don't wanna scratch this pan by cutting it in here. So let's see if I can't Ooh. get it out. Get it out, get it out. Here, we're gonna try a spatula. There we go. I think just some of the middle stuck a little bit. Yeah, nothing too major. There we go. It ended up coming out. It was just a little stuck in the middle. So now what I'm gonna do is cut it so I can show you a piece of puffy pizza. <gasps> Look at it. And it's nice and thick. Mmm. It doesn't have like pizza bready texture in the middle it's almost like a pizza quiche but it's not you don't taste the egg but there's a little bit of a texture I could have let it cook probably a little longer on the inside but that is delicious I got a little bit of tomato there's some mozzarella the sausage is spicy the mushrooms are chewy in there the bread it's it's bread like it just doesn't have quite you know the gummy consistency that a bisquick or a flour would have but it's delicious 
So there's my puffy pizza. I'm going to pack it up and I will have it for lunch and dinner this week. Next out of the oven is going to be the key, uh, the egg bake I have coming up and then I'm throwing in some muffins that I made. You'll see all of that at the end. All right, everything is finished. Uh, we're having egg casserole for breakfast this week, which is delicious. Um, in here, I have some pulled pork, and the sauce on top is Primal Golden Barbecue Sauce. No sugar, no cornstarch, no high fructose corn syrup. Um, it's pretty good. Two carbs for a couple tablespoons, so that works out well for me. And here's my coleslaw that's been kind of marinating all day, doing its thing. Oh, I'll have to use two hands for that one. And then my pizza, which I have to go out after work, so I'll have this as a snack on my way out. And that is my lunch for tomorrow. I hope that's helpful, and you have a good one. I'll talk to you later.